Noah's Ark When the world was still very young, it began to fill up with people and all sorts of creatures, including furry four-legged ones, birds, fish, fluttering butterflies, slithering snakes, creepy crawly spiders and insects. In those days there was a man called Noah. He was six hundred years old. Noah was hard-working, honest, and loved God with all his heart. However, the whole world had become very mean and evil. Everyone was lying, cheating, and stealing. People often got into fights, and sometimes they even killed one another. God saw all this, and was sad that men and women had become so evil. God decided to send a great flood and drown all of his creation under the waves. That way, he wouldn't have to look down on all the wickedness that upset him so very much. So God told Noah, You must build a huge boat out of gopher wood. It was to be called an ark, which means a place of safety. It was to have a great door, just one window, and three floors inside, filled with clean straw and plenty of food. He was to make it waterproof by putting black tar between the planks of wood. The boat was as big as a cruise ship, but not that nice, of course. Next, Noah was to tell his family to come and live in the ark, and they must also bring one male and one female of every type of creature. And so Noah and his three sons, who were called Shem, Ham, and Japheth, set about building the ark. Other people saw them working hard in the hot sun, and thought that they were wasting their time. They laughed at Noah and his sons and teased them. But still Noah kept believing and building, believing and building every day, till one day the ark was completed. Noah and his sons collected the animals, two of every kind, and gathered them in the ark. They did not need to keep them apart, because the lions understood that they must not eat the deer or the sheep on board the ark. The foxes didn't eat the hens, and wolves left the sheep alone. They all lived on grass and leaves, and although the larger animals became a little thin, they were content to lie down and leave the other creatures unharmed. Only the insects had to look out, in case an elephant or a horse trod on them by accident, but fortunately that didn't happen. Then just as God had promised Noah, it began to rain. It rained and it rained. In fact, it never stopped raining for one second. It rained for forty days and nights. The whole world was covered in water and everybody drowned, except for the fish and Noah's family and the animals who were safe in the ark. Everyone on the ark was safe and dry but the food was running out, and the people and animals began to look at each other hungrily. The wolves began to howl. Only after a hundred and fifty days did the water start to go down, and the bottom of the ark came to rest on top of a mountain called Ararat. Noah looked out of his window, but all he could see was water. He wondered if there was any dry land anywhere in the world, and so he released a blackbird called a raven into the air. But the raven could not find any land or trees, and it flew back to the ark. A week later, he sent out a white dove, but it came back with an empty beak as well. A week after that, he sent the dove again and she flew around until she found a tree to rest on. She returned to the ark with an olive leaf in her beak, and no one knew that there was a tree above the water. 
After another week, he sent the dove out again, and she did not return. So he knew that she had found a dry place to live. Everyone on board the ark celebrated because they were all longing to leave the ark, which, to tell you the truth, was becoming rather smelly. And it happened that after a year, a month, and a day, Noah opened up the ark, and he and his family and all the creatures stepped out onto dry land. What a day that was! How the animals bounded around, full of joy! It was the springiest spring in the history of the world. Stretching above the sky was a beautiful rainbow, and God said to Noah, "I have placed a rainbow in the sky as a sign of a promise that I will never destroy the earth and its creatures by a flood again." So go forth, have children. And fill up the earth again, and enjoy the world in all its beauty. That's exactly what Noah and his family did. Now, every time a rainbow appears in the sky, it is a reminder to all of us of the promises God made and the great faith Noah had to believe. <laughs>